Hey, what's up, guys? Chad Hermanson here with Mental Edge Training Coach. Today, I'm going to be talking with Ryan Nelson. Ryan is a former second-round pick last year by the Arizona Diamondbacks. He is a Las Vegas native who went to basic high school. He was a prospect at a high school, opted to go to the University of Oregon and forego the draft. And we're going to hear about his story, why he chose Oregon. Was that a good process for him? And what did he learn in college? And to find out what he's up to today. So if you are enjoying these episodes, of course, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell button so you don't miss out on any new episodes. But enjoy this episode with Ryan Nelson. Hey, Ryan and Ryan, how are we doing today? Doing good. good. How, how are you, you doing, Chad? Awesome. <laughs> I'm doing awesome. We got Ryan Nelson and Ryan Nelson on with us today. <laughs> yeah. So, so, Ryan, you were... A, a prospect at basic high school a few years ago, right? You had you had guys like me coming into your home, intruding, you know, doing all types of things. So what was that like for you as a as a prospect talking to scouts? Yeah, I think it was a little bit weirder in high school just because I had never even heard of this process of people coming to my houses and stuff. And I was just a little taken off taken off guard by that but once I got to college it was a little bit more normal a bunch of other guys were doing it with me so that process was a little easier but high school is definitely a surreal feeling just even just getting attention from scouts yeah so I remember you were going into your your senior year you know at this at this point I was helping out with one of the fall teams and mm -hmm. you were you were a two-way prospect so I want to make sure our audience knows that you were you were a shortstop <laughs> And then you came in to pitch, just throwing some gas, uh, buckling knees with your breaking ball. So we're like, who the heck is this kid, right? Now, mm -hmm. Ryan, for you, how, how about, can I call you dad on this call since we got two names? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it gets confusing with the names. You can blame mom for that. No problem. So, so when you were watching him grow up, as a young player, obviously, I'm assuming he played two positions. What was that like? And did you see something at some point with your you with your eyes as a dad like he's going to be either a hitter or a pitcher you know probably it's a tough one because i never really saw him as a pitcher he, he never other than little league he didn't really pitch we in the club playing club ball he played up in age so he was always a little smaller than the other kids <clears throat> but he was the only one on our team that could play shortstop okay so when he would pitch, we'd just have a big hole in the infield and it just moved everybody around and we were terrible when he pitched. <laughs> so we couldn't really afford for him to pitch other than Little League. So I think it was his 12-year-old season in Little League, he, he did pretty well pitching, but I wanna say it wasn't until, gosh, sophomore year that he really started to develop as a pitcher. And I think that's the first time anyone even noticed him as a pitcher. And it was Berlin, Germany, mm -hmm. who saw him pitch when um, I think we were playing, we we're playing Desert Oasis in, in Legion or something at Burkholder. And, and Berlin was there and we got talking and he was like, has he pitched his whole life? I'm like, no, he's just played shortstop. I mean, I never saw him as a pitcher. So, I mean, I'm happy that he's pitching, but kind of miss the shortstop days too. Yeah, well, it was a little different because, Ryan, you, you are now – I know when you eventually got to college, you kind of had some different roles, but you're now a closer, correct? Uh, right now I'm working as a starter. Uh, in college, I kind of had all the different kinds of roles. I was a spot reliever and then long reliever, closer, yeah. starter for a little bit my junior year, and then back to the bullpen. For the long, long inning relief. <laughs> so, so if we if we backtrack back to high school, because I remember you as a two way player, right? You played two mm -hmm. ways with this with the Cardinals scout team, and I saw that too. What, what Berlin saw, obviously, we saw the, probably the ninety plus, probably coming from shortstop. We're like, God, this guy can really throw, you know. So that that was a unique skill. You know, you had that tool right away. Was there a point for you, whether it was high school or not into college, where you said, okay, maybe I, maybe I am a pitcher? Yeah, I'd say right after they called me and asked me to be on that scout team, they were like, we want you to pitch. And I was like, 
man, I want to pitch so bad. Like, <laughs> that's like all I ever wanted to do. And I just was playing shortstop all the time. So when I got the chance to pitch, I jumped on it and just really, I really loved it. So, so pitching was your first love, even though you didn't quite do it a whole lot growing up? Yeah, I'd say it's more like the thing I couldn't do, I wanted to do so badly. So <laughs> once I got the chance, it was just game over. Okay. And, and you guys had some very successful teams in high school. T tell us about kind of your high school history and, and the, the, I guess, the success that you had in high school. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't always successful. My I started playing there like eighth grade year, playing Legion and going out to practices and stuff like that. So I kind of saw the program start from its very beginning, grow to us eventually winning the state championship my senior year. And it's it's something we talked about since I stepped foot on that field at basic. We were like, we're going to win a state championship here. And it was kind of just my goal through the whole time. And everybody who went there, even the guys before me who didn't, they paved the way for us. And the just the culture that we had over there at that program just can't not make you a better paid baseball player. Yeah, no doubt. It's always great to win a state championship. And, Dad, you won a state championship at the same school, correct? Yeah, yeah, 29 years before him. What year Me was that? Baker, that was 87, and, and Baker was on that team too. So it was, it was neat. It's like we came full circle. Yeah, so Scott, Scott Baker's the head coach at Basic High School. He's been there for quite a while now, has had a ton of success. A lot of good players have come through that program. Ryan, what have you noticed? You know, so we, we kind of fast forward to your senior year. Um, right prior to your senior year, you made the area code team. So mm -hmm. tell us what the area code team and I guess the significance of that for your career. Yeah, the area code team – that was kind of up there with like getting a college scholarship, like getting drafted, like making the area code teams, like kind of one of those goals you always set for yourself. Like, man, if I make that team, like, then I know, then I know I can hang with the big boys. So like that was, it was kind of a, a turning point for me where I was like, okay, maybe I can, maybe I can do this thing and succeed at a high level. So that was, I didn't have the greatest area codes show out, but just making that team and playing with those guys was a big turning point in my career. And you were, at this point, you, you made that area code team as a pitcher, correct? Yeah, yeah. That's the first – that was my first taste of pitcher-only life. Right. <laughs> so yeah. completely different life. You're, you're not hitting every day. You're, what was that like for you just sitting there watching when you weren't pitching? It was fun. I mean, I'd, I'd always heard stories about bullpen POs and how great the bullpen was. And, <laughs> like, you don't really get a bullpen experience your junior year of high school. So, like – going out there and sitting in the bullpen, I was like, yeah, I think pitching, pitcher life is life for me. Yeah. Now, did you commit to Oregon prior to going to the area codes? Yeah, I did. It was, I want to say it wasn't too long before the area codes because I remember seeing all the coaches there. Yeah. What, what was your recruiting experience like? Like, what other schools were talking to you? Um, I didn't have a bunch of schools talking to me. It was like UNLV, UNR. And then, like, a couple random ones sprinkled in there, GCU, Kansas. And then Oregon called me, and I was like, that sounds pretty nice. I think I'll, I think I'll go there. That's awesome. And, Dad, what were you in regards to his recruiting process? Was there something that really stood out to you, you know, I guess from your perspective and maybe some advice that you could give to other parents listening to this, uh, I guess, about the recruiting process? Uh, the, the biggest part, of course, being a dad is money. It's where are we going to, where can we go to maximize the dollars for his education? And where can he get a good education? And UNLV and UNR recruited, of course, full rides, not just full rides, academic, totally paid for plus a stipend. At Oregon, he got a partial. So I wasn't, I was steering him towards somewhere where we got more money. Mm -hmm. I just want college paid. I didn't, I never saw past the, the college game. I never looked, I mean, I thought there was a chance, but not as big a chance as he, as he ended up having to go play professionally. But I just wanted his education pay, paid for. But the recruiting trip to Oregon, you could just tell he fell in love with the campus, the atmosphere, um, just everything, the, the football stadium, just 
everything surrounding the program, the facilities, it's just, he, he was sold the minute he walked on campus. And then it's like all the other trips that we had planned were, were just canceled. So <laughs> that's all it took was that one trip. I mean, we, did, we, we had trips scheduled for Kansas and I think Arizona. UNR. And UNR. And we just canceled those. It was just after that trip, it was, it was pretty much done. You were, you were sold on the, you were sold on being a duck. You liked all that green. <laughs> oh yeah. I like the Nike That was tough to get used too. to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I took my, my son uh, there about a year ago uh, to their, they was invited to a camp and it was my first time down in Eugene. I'm like, this place is incredible. So I, I totally get like, if you get offered to go there, that's, that's definitely hard to pass up, even though we, we know how expensive it is too. Isn't that around like 50 grand a year to go there so, r- roughly? It's getting there. Yeah. It yeah. was about 40, 43 to 45 out of state. So yeah, that's a big decision, right? To go out of state and, and make that decision. So when you, so now you committed to Oregon, right? You have a, a, a an area codes. Now tell us, because the, the listeners are like, okay, you're a pitcher. So tell us about what pitches you throw. This is in high school. And roughly what were your velocities for each pitch? Okay. So in high school, I threw five pitches. I threw a fastball, slider, curve, split, and a changeup for some reason. <laughs> I just thought it was cool I could throw them all, so I just had to show them all. And uh, I was probably – on like my best days, 91, 92, maybe a 93 in there. But I would usually be around like 88, 89, some 90s in there. Yeah. Um, mainly fastballs because I was usually behind in the count because I was pretty wild. Uh, <laughs> and I didn't really have much feel for my off speed. Most of, most of my refining of all my tools happened in college. Mm-hmm. So tell us about that. So, okay, so – Fastball is roughly, you could say, 87 to 91. Mm. And then that, that on a good day, maybe touching a two or a three. So I want, I just want to paint a picture for, you know, a young high school kid that's listening to this. Um, and, and some days, maybe it was even maybe 90 plus. Or was there some days when you had – because I remember, Ryan, when we had a, a – during your senior year talking to your dad. I think we were a DO, uh, dad, if you remember – because um, mm-hmm. I knew that as you were a position player playing every single day, and then you were also pitching. So when you weren't pitching, you, you like never had any rest, right? You never, yeah. you never had a break. And so we started to see your velo slightly decline kind of a little mm-hmm. bit of senior year, right, Dad? Yeah, big right. time. Do you, do, you, do you think that was a big part of it, was just not having a lot of rest and recovery in between his starts? Yeah, I, I, think, I think I was – looking back – I was a very immature pitcher and didn't know how to prepare myself well before games, in between games, and let alone figuring out how to do that as well as playing shortstop. And I kind of really noticed that once I got to college and I was like, wow, like (laughs) in order to compete here, like I'm going to have to work really hard at both just to compete and like not look dumb out there. So it was like just not really knowing how to take care of my arm to the best ability in high school, I think really hindered my success and possibly getting drafted out of high school. Yeah, I, I think it's certainly an easy point to overlook. And what, what advice would you give? Because obviously we're still seeing a lot of two-way players in high school. Um, you know, if, you, if you're one of the better athletes on the team, you're probably going to be pitching as well. Mm-hmm. Um, some teams are really good where you don't need you know, because you're so loaded pitching that you can just stick and play shortstop, for example. Um, but what advice would you give that two-way player that's in high school? Um, I would just – it's going to be tough. It's not going to be easy. But if you truly want to do both, like ev- like Shohei Otani is doing it right now. Like a bunch of – there's a lot of minor leaguers right now that teams are giving a shot to play both. So, like, if you really love it and you want to do it, like, you just got to work hard and you got to perfect both crafts. You got two things you got to work at instead of one now. Mm-hmm. What about you, dad? You, you've been doing a lot of coaching your son and then your younger son. What, what, how do you guys work with the two way player? I mean, it, it's, it's a lot harder with the, with the younger kids. Cause you only, we only carry 11 or 12 
players on the team. So you're obviously going to have kids that have to do both. I mean, I try to be as conscious as, as I can with their pitch count. I won't let them throw more than <clears throat> 100 pitches in a tournament. I just, I just refuse. I, I don't care. I mean, wins, wins aren't important. It's never been about winning and losing a tournament. If we win, great. I really don't care. But I just, just watching what Ryan's gone through and what I went through with my elbow, it's just I want those kids to take care of their arms. And I, and I won't, I won't, I won't let a kid catch and then come into pitch. It's just, you really got, you have to watch that with, with the younger kids because they don't know. They, they'd throw 200 pitches a, a weekend if they could. And there's dads that would allow it. I mean, I would, I would come unglued if, if I saw my little guy throwing 200 pitches a weekend. So right. Right. I, I just, I just try. I mean, my wife luckily keeps score so I can yell at her during the game, what's the pitch count, what, what's he at, and she doesn't get upset. But it's just, it's just one of those things that I, I see where he's got and with low mileage on his arm, and I just want those kids to have as few pitches on their arms as possible. Absolutely. So, Ryan, you, you, now you've got through your senior year, you win a state championship, uh, the draft happens. Now, did you get drafted out of high school that first year as a senior? No, no drafts my senior year. So, so that you were, so you didn't get taken in the draft. So, so it's an easy, easy way to go. Okay, I'm going to Oregon. Uh, what, what were your feelings during that time? Did you feel like, man, I should have been drafted? I want, I really wanted to sign, or were you kind of already set on going to school? Um, you know, I really wanted to get drafted. For me, I just saw it as three extra years of pro baseball while the college guys are um, sitting there waiting to get drafted still. So. For me, I if the number would have been even like remotely close, I probably would have taken it, but didn't get a call and probably turned out to be for the best and really perfected myself as a pitcher and like got a lot of work in with Dietrich and saw some great pitchers get drafted before me. So I, I really think it was for the best not getting drafted out of high school. So now when you went to Oregon, you were still at this point a two-way player, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so walk us through the kind of your freshman, sophomore, junior year. What did that look like? And at what point did you become just a pitcher? Um, well, actually, first day of practice, I they were like handing out gear bags and I didn't get a bat or anything. So like in my head, I was like, yes, here we go. They forgot that I played infield. I I'll just won't tell them, won't tell them anything. So then I get to practice, and they're like, all right, base running. So I went up and asked them, and they're like, oh, no, no, yeah, you're, that, that was a mess up. Like, you're doing both. Okay. So then I oh, ended so up having you did, base running. So you, you weren't even quite sure when you got to school what, what role you're going to be in, in a way. They had never really said specifically. That it had kind of been mentioned in the recruiting, but it just really felt like they wanted me to be a pitcher, and they were just kind of letting me, like, hit because I wanted to, or they thought I wanted to. <laughs> they, 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 they want to hurt your feelings right yeah yeah <laughs> so take us through like what was your mindset you know and how did that develop from high school into college where where do you felt kind of like you where you where'd you grow the most so my freshman and sophomore year um at Oregon we would always do this like preseason kind of like a team meeting and Ken Revisa would actually come and talk to us and talk about like mental aspects of the game, like all these different tips and tricks of breathing and stuff you can do on the mound. And it's just like kind of opened my mind to like this next level of like, how can I be this much better than the next guy? Like being able to deal with adversity and like knowing when you're going good to like keep that even keel and stuff like that. So it was just a, that was probably my turning point and eye opening as a pitcher. So in, in, in high school, did you, did you do any of that in high school, read any books, anything to help on the mental side of the game? Uh, I mean, I'd always heard coaches talk about it and stuff like that, but I never really took it seriously until the guy who wrote the book was standing in front of my face, kind of <laughs> giving me the lesson on like what his stuff actually means. Yeah. So yeah. I think in, in high school, I was kind of naive <laughs> to all that stuff. Yeah, it's – and in a way, too, it's like you're not quite sure, like, do I even need this yet, right? You're just yeah. – I'm just playing baseball. 
I probably wouldn't have even known how to use it all correctly if I was given all that in high school and I, I hadn't gone through getting my brains beat in by my own team in the fall and just like, oh man, I got to compete with these guys just to play. Like, how am I going to compete against other teams? Yeah. Yeah. Kind of learning like self doubt, you know, lacking mm -hmm. confidence. Do I even feel in yourself spiral? Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Nice. So now, what I envisioned to you, we talked, uh, Berlin and I talked about this too way back when, is when we started to see you on the mound, I, I want to paint a picture for our audience. Um, you're roughly 6'3", this is in high school, 6'2", 6'3", tall, wiry, kind of a medium, large frame, because you're roughly about, you're thin, you're about 160, 165 pounds. Yeah. yeah. Is that fair? Right? Yeah, I was 165 when I walked on campus my freshman year of high school or freshman year of college. Okay. Yeah. So just tall, but but a super fast, quick arm. So mm -hmm. when and I, we talk about this when we're scouting, we're like, okay, what's the projection on this kid? They're like, you know, whether he gets to, he's he's already tall enough, great, but he weighs 165 pounds. Like, what is this gonna look like when he's 185? When he's 195? And I'm like, that's what I envisioned sign, I thought it was pretty simple is like, I'm seeing 95 plus, right? If, if we're falling in love with Velo, that, that's what I see. I see a tight breaking ball, probably a potential wipeout slider. And what do you know? That's what you are now. <laughs> so, so, yeah. so tell us, I, tell us about your junior year, what that junior year was like and what does your stuff look like, you know, three years later? So my junior year, um, going into the season, I was still throwing five pitches. <laughs> but now I was fastball, curveball, splitter, cutter. Maybe that's just four. And I, a fastball, slider, curveball, splitter, cutter. Okay. Yeah. So you have them all. And um, cutter I learned in like three weeks before the season. And I was like, yep, we're busting this out on opening day. Fell in love with it. Um, but I mean, junior year, I was probably 93 to 95 as a starter, bump a couple up every once in a while, but the velo really came out to play out of the pen, just the adrenaline pump or something about it. I just coming out of that pen, the velo would just spike a couple miles per hour. What was your highest velo your, your, your junior year? Um, it popped up on the board as 100, but it was 99.6 on the gun. It didn't round up. <laughs> so so that, that's – you got to – it's 100 miles an hour, dude. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Can't count it. So it's interesting, you know, as we're, as we're scouting guys and we see that quick arm, we see the athleticism, that, that's, that's kind of the point of what I wanted to bring you on today is how many kids fit your frame right, coming out of high school, that tall, wiry, skinny kid. It might not be there yet, but heck, I mean, you were, you were touching 92 in high school, but your body couldn't quite hold that velo, mm -hmm. right, because you didn't get any breaks. You, you, maybe you said you didn't, weren't taking care of your arm as much as maybe you should have, but that's really hard to do anyway. <laughs> right? Yeah, when you're, exactly. When you're at that size. So what, what do you weigh now? Um. I've been up to like 205, but I'll usually hover around like 185 to 195. It'll, it fluctuates pretty good. Good. So, I mean, you gain 30 pounds, right? And yeah. Since then, and, and you look good. You look athletic, quick arms. So you're touching 100 miles an hour. So, Dad, what have you seen from your perspective? And how fun has that been to watch him through that? It's been a blast. I mean, the last year was a lot of fun to watch. And, the game that stands out to me was the Oregon State game on Mother's Day last year. That was, uh, I mean, he's facing Adley Rushman two or three times that game, uh, striking him out twice, and he's the number one pick in the draft. Just, just so happens it's Mother's Day, it's my birthday. He goes, I think he came in in the third, finished the game, 120 pitches. It's just, it was one of those exciting once-in-a-lifetime games where he's got everything together. Every pitch was working. Just um, the confidence and just a little bit of swagger on the mound, which is fine, you know, yeah. but just confidence. And then just – it was just fun to watch. And it's – like I said, I never wanted him to be a pitcher, but I love watching him pitch now. I, I, I couldn't do it in the past. I just put my head down and 
I, I was fine with him at short, fine with him hitting. I could watch, but when he'd go to the mat, I'd just I'd get up and walk away. I just couldn't watch. <laughs> He's got that ball in his hand every pitch, right? It's <laughs> yeah, you just <laughs> You don't know what, and then just to see what he's gone through with the little tiny injuries and overcome those to get to where he's at now, it's just, it's been fun to watch. Yeah, that's so. awesome. So let, let's fast forward, Ryan, to draft day. Now, it's kind of interesting because as an Angels scout, I know, Dad, you, you've been an Angels fan your whole life. <laughs> yeah. Right? So you're, you're probably... Yeah. You're like, gosh, I'd love my for my kid to play. What was that like in, for you going through that process? Well, you guys had the pick right before, and he got the call from his agent. I think we, we were 56, you were 55 or whatever, 56, 57, and he got a call about 54, 55, and he wouldn't tell us who it was. Okay. So, of course, I'm thinking <laughs> he's going to be an angel. I mean, dreams come true, and then you guys called somebody else. But – Honestly, it didn't matter. I mean, yeah. to, to go as high as he went after we, we had a meeting with his with his advisor, agent, I think the night before the Oregon State game, and we were expecting fourth, fifth, sixth round at that time. And then he just had that, that game of his life, Oregon State, another great game at, at SC. And then now we're here in late first, early second, and we were we were just ecstatic. So, yeah. just it was yeah. it was a it was a crazy ride. You know. So what's ironic, Ryan, about all that is so I I was fortunate enough to go to the draft uh, in New York. Mm -hmm. So I got to announce our second round pick. Like you were saying, Dad, that was the pick. Yeah. The pick before you went, and so I announced we we picked Kyrene Paris, uh, a shortstop out of a uh, kind of the Northern California area, right? Yeah. And so I went, I, I'm putting the Angels little little card up there. And then I walk back and all of a sudden I hear, and the Arizona Diamondbacks is like, Ryan Nelson. I'm like, God! <laughs> <laughs> so we, had a lot, we had a lot of players that were, you know, obviously as a scout, you know, you want what's best for your team, but you also, you have some, some skin in the game, right? You want to get some players mm -hmm. that you really like. Um and, I, and player, you know, I know our guys asked me about you, you know, when you were in high school. And I'm like, I remember right in high school, I'm like, this kid might throw 100 miles an hour. Um, and sure enough, you did because you, you just kept working hard and doing your thing. So it, I was obviously happy for you, you know, and I'm like, good for him. And so now you've started your, your pro career. Um, we're in a little shutdown phase right now, but you got to have a, a season – I guess a half a short season, you know, something like that. What was it like going out into pro ball for you? Yeah, it was fun. It had like a little bit of summer ball vibes to it, you know, coming right out of high school, uh, right out of college and flying out to some <laughs> random person's house and living with them and playing baseball. So it was, it was a little bit familiar, but um, I mean, it was, it was a blast. We won the championship. I threw like, 12 or 13 innings so it was pretty light on my arm but I mean it was it was a blast I got to be a part of a team that's won three championships in the last seven years and just like hang another banner up there and <laughs> it was cool too to do it with seven eight guys that I knew really well from my draft class yeah that's awesome so you you, you got your season now what's happening for you right now so at the time of this recording it's we're in the middle of June uh, we're a few months into COVID-19. Things are starting to open up. Uh, we don't know what's happening with Major League Baseball yet, we don't know if they're season or not. What's going through your mind right now as, as a minor league player, and how are you preparing yourself? Um, this season, this, it's weird. It, it feels like baseball is kind of in a strike right now, and the minor leaguers are probably going to catch the crappy end of it, and <laughs> we're going to – be stuck just with a long off season and another instructs I think so mm -hmm. kind of just preparing myself to go out there and whenever I get a chance to throw on the mound just treating it like it's a regular game and just competing like I would if I was out at an affiliate somewhere because when it comes down to it like you're really just pitching for the people watching in the front office so if they see you do good they're gonna make their assumptions on you no matter what yeah no doubt 
no doubt. And then one thing to keep in mind too is once that season starts, you mentioned pitching for the front office. Um, I don't think many people know this, but as an area scout, we're actually there's, there's area scouts on the amateur side, and then there's also pro scouts. So pro scouts are assigned uh, different teams. So let's say mm-hmm. uh, let's say we have a pro scout that's assigned the Diamondbacks. They're going to go scout the whole Diamondbacks system, right? And then once the draft is over, guys like me, the amateur draft, we're actually assigned typically two minor league teams to go scout. Um, give some extra eyes on some players, maybe some players we haven't seen yet, uh, and get reports on that. So my point in that is with every game you pitch in the minor leagues, there's, there's scouts there, right? So you're really, every time you play, you are playing for 30 teams. Oh, yeah. So, that, so that's kind of cool because a lot of times, a lot of times players don't even make the big leagues with the team that they drafted. You know, they can get traded. Um, that's, that's the whole purpose. You got trades. All these players kind of coming through the funnel, if you will, and, you know, what pieces work for each player. So that's awesome. What would you say from a mindset perspective, how do you go out and attack hitters? Uh, I, f- I feel like me personally, I'm two different people uh, when I'm in the, dug- uh, in the dugout on an off day and when I'm on that mound on game day. It's, it's kind of weird. Like there's that old baseball movie. I don't really know what it's called, but he's like clear the mechanism or whatever. And yep. that's that's kind of a mindset that I've had to train myself to be able to get into over the years. And that's a lot of breathing work and a lot of focus and really doing it in my work on the side too, playing catch, focusing, getting in that mentality and just like really trying to lock in what, when you perform your best on the mountain, like I perform better when I'm a little fired up and maybe a little a bit of adrenaline going. And I, I know that, so I've, try to get myself into that mindset before the game and preparing that way. Yeah. And, and are you, are you mentioned it in the minor leagues now, are you still, are you starting? Are you now closing or a little bit of both? Um, it, I'm working as a starter, but we had like 12 starters on my team last year. So yeah. it was like the guy would throw three innings and I'd come in and throw three innings, but we were both technically starters. Yeah. It's a little bit different in the, in the single A and below, especially when you first start that short season, there's so many players. And yeah. Which is probably good because most of, the, most of you guys have thrown so much, <laughs> you know, to, you're not throwing six, seven inning starts. So it kind of mixes it up. Dad, have you, did you were able to see some of his games this past summer as a pro? Yeah, we got to see his first, he threw one inning in Boise. We got to fly up there for that. And then I think, I went with his younger brother to Portland to watch. And I think that was the game or the game before they wrapped up or it was, it was a couple games before they wrapped up the uh, regular season championship, but it was electric. I mean, they, they, they drew five and 6,000 fans yeah. to a short season single eight game. I mean, it was, it was amazing. Just, just sitting there and just absorbing it all. And then when he's in there, just it's kind of neat to listen to everybody cheer for your kid and being in a home crowd, everything's positive. So that was that was nice. You weren't you weren't the away team. You weren't in the hostile environment listening <laughs> to all that. But but that that Portland Stadium, it's it's amazing. And just to to take in a game there was a blast. Now is is it the same Portland Stadium that's downtown? That's kind of below. Or they have a new stadium. They had one downtown that was kind of below. No, it's not downtown. It's in Hillsboro. 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 Okay. Okay, just perfect. outside of Portland. Yeah, yeah, it's fun. It, so you you got to skip rookie ball, right? Yeah. Well, no, I went to the AZL for like two, three weeks just to get my throwing program in, but I never pitched a game in the AZL. Okay. How how excited were you to get out of there? Oh, <laughs> those two or three weeks were a very long. Two or three weeks. It was 120 every day. I was never pitching. I was throwing like the most fun thing I did each day was throw out to like 90 feet. So, yeah, I was ready yeah. to get out of there. Yeah, it, it can be tedious, long, it's hot, it's 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 rough. So I, I, every kid I tell that I draft them, I do just try to play well, get out of here as quick as you can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's good. So what are, you, uh, what are your goals for, you know, you're going to go in, obviously it's a little bit different right now, but I mean, do you, where, when do you see yourself getting to the big leagues? Have you thought about that? Uh, I haven't really thought 
much about that. I mean, I just kind of try to take it one step at a time, try to focus more on myself as a pitcher than really get into that next level. Just try to make my adjustments get better and everything because it's not just going to happen if I don't make myself better. So I just got to kind of lock that down right now and perfect my craft while I can. Perfect. So it's all about the process, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Awesome. What advice, Ryan, as we, we'll wrap this up, you've been awesome with your time here. What advice do you have, you know, for say any high school, any college kids that might be listening, uh, just really any advice at all? Yeah, I mean, the biggest advice I wish somebody would have told me when I was younger, maybe first start in high school is be just believe in yourself, trust in the way that you play the game and just work hard to perfect your craft every day and if you give it 100%, there's nothing you can ask for if you leave it out, all out there on the field. Love it. Awesome. What about you, Dad? Any, any words of wisdom from Dad? Pretty much that. I think we tried to tell them that when they were younger, too, but they didn't listen. So that's, that's, <laughs> I, tell my, I tell all our kids on our club teams, just play every pitch, every out, every inning, like it's the last one you're going to ever play. Just sell out and just buy in, like – with, with this new program we're doing the basic just buy into the system and trust the process and it is it's, it's a process and just just trust what they're doing with you and the results aren't going to be immediate but they are going to come so and just trust in it no doubt that's awesome that's awesome i appreciate you guys coming on board today um i wanted to get some some dad's perspective you know with how the draft process works and and I, I think I'm going to do quite a few more of these because I'm, I, I've been having parents like, hey, it's great listening to major leaguers, but I don't know if my son's going to be a big leaguer. I want to hear from like the dad and the kid that went through the draft, you know, didn't sign out of call out of high school, went to college. What was that process like? So I really appreciate you guys and your advice through this. For sure. No problem. It was fun. Thanks, Chad. All right, guys. So you guys take care and have a good one. We'll be in, we'll be in touch. Thank you. You too. All right. Take care. We'll see you. Well, I hope you enjoyed that episode with Ryan Nelson and dad, Ryan Nelson. Great guys. They've done a great job. Ryan, I think, is going to have a, a really great big league career. Uh, get out to see him. His stuff's electric. You know, wipeout slider, 95 plus with his fastball. So if you also need any help with your mental game and improving in your performance, make sure you check out mentaledge.training. There I have an online course. Check that out. I have a free course as well. And if you're really looking to get more one-on-one -on -one coaching or even team coaching, schedule something with me online and through my email, which is Chad Hermanson at mentaledge.coach. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the next episode.